Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and uh, I have two knives in my collection that have stayed in my ADCD rotation the longest of any of the knives I've ever owned, and there's never been many days that go by that one of them is not in my pocket. And this is, this is a pretty big deal because I have a rather large collection, especially being a knife reviewer, you know, and I've been collecting for the last, you know, 20 plus years. So I definitely accumulated a lot of knives and this, I got a good bit of nice ones as well. And, you know, I've been blessed in to be able to buy these knives. You know, I've saved a lot to get what I have and I've done a lot of trading. So, you know, for any knife to stay in the rotation for a week solid without coming to my pocket is is just that means a lot about that knife because I'm constantly having to ro rotate my knives so I can carry them off. They don't get carried within a month. I usually sell them, and I know that sounds crazy too. But like I said, I have a lot to rotate from, and I'm usually carrying a certain knife for review, so I, I always have at least two knives on me. If not more, I know that's that's crazy, but that's just the, the life of a reviewer, I guess you could say. Um, and let me know down in the comment section below if there's a certain knife in your collection, especially, you know, if you have more than, like, say, 10 knives, but there's that, that one knife that always ends up making its way back into your pocket. You know, the honeymoon phase never wore off or, you know, a lot of times you're like, all right, what's what's the next not new knife I'm gonna be chasing? You know, it's part of that that knife addiction. So, the first one is probably this is just this knife has just surprised me in so many ways, and that is the Booze Blade Smoke. This is a a, a 2.85 ounce knife with a total length of eight inches. That's that's remarkable. Very, very remarkable. And it, it, this knife just makes the most sense as far as uh, type of blades that, that I can carry the easiest and most comfortable. You know, even, even though 3.5 inch, you know, blade lengths, which that's what this is, or that's like my favorite length and used to be, you know, what I always used to buy. Um, usually those blades... Uh, are a little either too thick, too wide, a uh, little too heavy for the the type of clothing that I have to wear now. Ever since my accident, I wear you know lightweight fishing style shorts, and you know uh, anything over four ounces tends to look funny. It like hangs the pocket to the side. Now I carry it still. Sometimes I throw it in my back pocket. But it's just not the, the most comfortable, and it doesn't make the most sense for me, you know. And the smoke checks all those boxes for me. You know, I'm still able to get that 3.5-inch blade, close it up, super slim. I, I barely even notice this guy's in the pocket. You get that full-size blade. You get very, very lightweight at 2.85 ounces. It's amazing for an 8-inch knife. Um... It has great construction. It's it's very comfortable in hand. It has good blade steel, S35VN. It's very, very smooth. I mean, look at that. It's, it's, it's smooth on the opening and the retraction. Very, very smooth. And it's gotten smoother and smoother as I've used and, not abused, but just used this knife and carried it over the however long I've been having it. Uh... Let's see. Like I said, it's well made. It's made by We Knives. Uh, you know, their 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 QC is just top notch. Um, you know, for your higher end knives, besides Riot, you know, and We We's like right underneath the, the Riot, but you know, there's a different price category. To me, Riot produces what we used to call mid techs. And we is that high end production right under right under Riot, you know. And you got companies like Best Tech and Tuya and and those style companies that are right right up 
right behind we, but you know, they're all in that different category. So we has been knocking it out the park, especially with all their uh, collaborations with the custom makers that they've been doing. I don't know how in the world they're keeping up with that, but you know, that's not what this video is about. So there is also another knife that, you know, usually if this guy's not in my pocket, then this knife is. And uh, it just hasn't been in my collection as long because I got it in on a trade with my boy Copper Dice. And that is the Millet Knives Torrent. Uh, the Torrent is uh, designed by one of my favorite designers, TJ Swartz. It's a, a 7 and 3 eighths inch overall length at 2.88 ounces. Another super lightweight knife. And as you can see, nice and slim. Now, it's not as slim as a smoke, but, I mean, it's not, it's not that much larger, you know. If it wouldn't be for, for the flipper tab, it would be pretty much the same. So, I usually carry, uh, I, I carry the, the torrent when I'm wanting something a little bit uh, more stout for heavier use. Uh, this one's got XHP blade steel. I'm about to get a uh, Carpenter 204P blade made for this. And uh, it's just a well-made knife. It has lots of custom options. You know, you can you can get uh, what type of finish you want on here. You have a few, I think, options of blade steels. They do small batch runs of these knives. You can get the carbon fiber overlay right here you can get a titanium overlay damascus overlay i mean damascus steel overlay damascus steel blade um just like i said tons of cust custom options and out of all the knives i've had all the flippers i own this is the smoothest knife i own in my collection flipper non-flipper whatever i mean look at this and i got that thing cranked down all the way and i mean it's whoo it's a guillotine and it's it's got that more hydraulic shut. It's not. It's not going to bounce off the backspacer. Um, it it does just that perfect roll down there. Just a great, great knife. Now this guy is uh, a good bit more pricier than the smoke. At I think around I think they come in right around four hundred dollars or three eighty or something like that, depending on what options you get. Um, and this guy was a limited run. And I think it came in at $200, but, you know, every once in a while you can find them on the secondary market. I'll tell you right now, if you see one of these on the secondary market and it doesn't have any functional issues, I'd jump on it. It's a great knife, especially if you're looking for your slim, lightweight, well-made knife that, you know, it just it, it's perfect for my carry options. And your carry options may differ. Now, I, I, I got a new grail in today that will definitely give these two a run for their money. Now, especially if I'm looking to carry something a little bit uh, more sheeple friendly, being that this is a 3.5 inch blade and this, um, you know, this is not a whole lot smaller. It's definitely over your three inch marker. But uh, this next one I just picked up and it checks a lot of the boxes as well. And that is the Olamic Busker. With the simper blade on there, just ooh, pocket greatness right here. Very slim in this dimension, uh, in the pocket. The way that this this clip does, it kind of cants the knife to the right a little bit, so it doesn't take up any hardly any real estate in the pocket, or at least no noticeable real estate in the pocket, even though it's wide. Uh, this one's got, you know. Just like this guy, you got the front flipper, you can thumb flick it. This one's a little harder to thumb flick. You got uh, the spidey flick action here. All three of them have multiple opening methods. Uh, I'd say this one is probably, well, let me, let's, let's check it out. Let me see which one's the easiest to do all the methods. Okay, you got your spidey flick which is it's a little bit more difficult being that this one's a lot uh, thinner this way, so you got to kind of catch yourself on that clip. You can easily, this is the easiest and to me one of the best front flipper designs as far as the way that front, front flipper's canted back. The jimping's just right on there, super duper smooth. 
Um, now, sometimes I can, yeah, I can flip it out. This one's a little bit more difficult to flip out. And if I want to slow roll it, I got to kind of pinch the blade and do it like that. So this one, you know, is very easy front flipping, very, I mean, pretty, pretty easy whoopsie like that. Pretty, for me, front flippers where this guy shines are the slow, slow for front front flipper roll. Now let's check out the torrent over the uh, busker. Very easy to access that flipper tab. Spidey flick is very easy with this knife as well. Let's see, this is pretty hard with this one. Cause you gotta, you gotta push it out. You're not pushing it up, you gotta push it out. So I'd say this one, you know, it's, it's a lot easier to do everything, but the thumb flick with this one is a little bit difficult. Just because you gotta like bury the fat of your thumb inside of there and you don't have a whole lot of uh, clearance right here to get extra thumb fat underneath there, but it, it can be done. So this one probably beats out the deployments or multiple deployments a little bit better than the smoke. And that's just for my hands and my fingers. Now let's see the busker. Easy spidey flick action. The front flipper, very easy on this one. This one's well designed too. It has a little scoop. It's not just straight forward like this. The jimping on there is perfect. The detent style then perfect. Uh, it's easy to slow roll. This is the easiest one to do your thumb slow roll just because you have better access to that thumb hole. Now let's see. This one has a better thumb flick than that one. It just depends. Sometimes I would say this one is probably an easier thumb flick because you have a, a bigger, you know, easier to get your thumb in there. This one I feel like I'm pulling my thumb back and sometimes I get it reliably. This one I just, I, I'm not really used to it yet. And being that it has the medium detent instead of like a stiffer detent, you really need to kind of get it right. But let's see, let's see if I can get three times in a row. Yep, three times in a row. Once I get this one down packed, I think this guy is going to be the easiest to do the multiple opening methods out of the bunch. Uh, which one do I like aesthetically the most? Um, it would have probably been the Torrent, but now it, it it's really getting close with the uh, Busker. I've always liked the Busker since it, since they debuted it last Blade Show in a prototype form. I, I just love it. I love the look of it. They're all pretty good looking knives. Uh, the smoke kind of looks like a, some of my steak knives. But I mean, you know, you have a lot of the same design cues in the Torrent. So y'all let me know which one is y'all favorite out of the group. Uh, the Probably the most accessible is the Busker. Because you, you'll see runs of these on Blade HQ. I think, I, I think I've seen some um, just last night on either Blade, Blade HQ or GP Nas or maybe both. Um, then the Torrent, you just gotta you just gotta keep an eye out and they do pre-orders for um, the next batch. And I think they had a pre-order live not too long ago. You put down like $65 or something like that. And as far as the smoke. They just did a, another run of these in M390, uh, but you know those are their small batch. He does small batch knives, and uh, I talked to him not too long ago, and he he was telling me that there is one more run of these knives for sure it's supposed to be coming out. I don't know exactly when, but it's probably one that I might jump on as well because it's going to have the M390 blade. This will be a Blade HQ exclusive, so they're going to have a carbon fiber show scale. This one needs to be re-anodized. It's been in and out of the pocket, wearing that anodizing out. Which color y'all think I should go with? Might go with, um, I don't know. It's going to be a, a, a multi-color one, probably for sure. But like I said, let me know down in the comments section below what knife has been a mainstay in your EDC rotation, you know. Like I said, especially if you have a big collection, you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you'll be on the honeymoon phase with a certain knife, and then that next knife that comes in just kind of bumps it off to the side, and you might not carry that knife again for a month. But like I said, these two right here, ever since I owned them, especially this one because I've been owning it longer, 
uh, as long as I've owned this guy, it has not been out of the pocket, I don't think, for a solid week. And that, that's huge for the amount of knives that I go in and out of <coughs> from trading and buying and such. So definitely are interested to see what, what knife is like that in your collection or if you have one like that. You know, I know some guys that, you know, it's kind of like women in, in their dresses and stuff. They don't ever wear them twice. I mean, not really, but, you know, they got such large collections and deep pockets that they're constantly buying the next latest and greatest. So I always like to see what, you know, my, my uh, subscribers, you know, what really does it for them. And I'll tell you what, it's, it's been a, a great, great year for me. I was able to pick up two grails in one year or I think in I think I got this one I was able to pick up this one as well you know anybody who's been following me knows that Lanny's is has been a grail of mine for the longest time and getting being able to get a production Lanny's but as much as I love this knife it does not get half the amount of pocket time as the rest of these guys because I mean just let, just let me give you a uh, see the thickness of it the overall size, I mean, thickness of this guy, you know, overall size, width, and all that. Now, you got you got a bigger blade on the uh, smoke, a good bit bigger blade and good bit bigger in length, but watch, I mean, just let me show you how the, this is, you know, this make this matters for somebody like myself that is limited to the type of clothing he wears. So, like I said, this is, whoop, I'm on grams. 2.83 ounces, followed by 4.73 ounces. Now, like I said, that's not terrible, but it's just not going to be a knife that is in my pocket as much as these three. So... You know, that's just unfortunate, you know, three years ago, that, that would have never been the issue. You know, I towed it around. I didn't care about any size, weight, you know, and I still don't care about it. I'll still buy it. It just won't get as much carry time as some of these. And, and I'll tell you, like, you know, if I didn't love this as much as I did, you know, if it's not getting enough pocket time, it's just not going to stay in the collection because it just doesn't make sense to have – that kind of money tied up and I'm not getting use out of it. So that's just that's just the way I look at it, the way I think about knives. And I want to hear what y'all have to say down below. Hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. If you like my videos, give them a big thumbs up. Spread them on all your friends and family and your social networks. If you like my videos in general and you're not already, hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. You don't want to miss 2,000 subscriber giveaway. It's going to be epic. All right, guys and girls, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.